So, what's going on in the Suez? <laughs> it's been a long day, I'm not going to lie. Late evening, uh, uh, doing some interviews with uh, Australia and New Zealand on the other side of the world when word came in that she's gone, she's loose, she's free, she's floating. And uh, we all went through the same thing. Uh, she's up, she's floating, is she really? Got the stern loose, she's uh, up and free. Uh, obviously, they pushed this up. I'm going to tell you, I, I don't have any insight in the salvers themselves. I've talked to a lot of salvers, and I've talked to a lot of mariners, a lot of people involved in the industry, but nobody directly with it except for the official. I've read all the official stuff. Everyone's, everything's coming out. And I'm going to say this right now. I'm pretty sure the Egyptians put a lot of pressure on them to free that ship to the point that they basically told them whatever damage you inflict on the vessel will cover, just get the canal open. Uh, as I said before, and I've said it many times, salvage is slow and methodical. This was fast. Uh, pulling that vessel off was amazing. The fact that the ship is operating on its own engine, uh, there's a video from CNN uh, where you can see prop wash and she was doing seven knots. She's doing 6.7 right now in the lower lake. Uh, she's about to, uh, she'll be around in the bend by the airport coming into the uh, uh, Great Bitter Lake here fairly soon. It's just incredible. A vessel that's taken hull damage, vessel, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, could have suffered engine damage. Uh, a hit like that, you would almost never really want to put a vessel, any mechanical things running, because you just don't know what's going on. Have you got a pipe leak, oil leak, something like that. Uh, really, really incredible. Uh, that they're doing it. Hats off to everybody involved. Uh, again, uh, no lives were endangered here, which is good. Uh, uh, they weren't worried about that. I got my phone ringing, so hang on one second. Back, sorry. Uh, phone's been ringing off the hook. Uh, uh, people wanted to talk about this. Uh, my favorite is, is people calling in with great ideas. Uh, I mean, I swear, I wish I was involved in the salvage. I would take these ideas and use them, but I'm not. I just, I, I have no insight to Smith Salvage, to the Egyptian government and to Evergreen. Uh, although I have been liked by uh, the motor vessel uh, Evergreen, Evergreen on uh, Twitter, which is, which is exciting. Anyway, the vessel is heading into the Great Bitter Lake now. She's in the lower lake right now. She'll be in the Great Bitter Lake shortly, probably, uh, probably about an hour or two, it looks like. Uh, and again, that, what that's gonna do is start the movement. You'll see the ships within the lake clear. They gotta get out first, gotta clear the lake. Uh, those vessels have been in a tight anchorage for a long time. They need to get out. So you're going to dump the lake out. Uh, then what you'll probably start seeing is the southern vessels head northbound through the lane where Evergiven was. Reason for that is they can head up, head into the lake, start heading northbound, and there's double lanes above the lake in certain spots. So you can actually have vessels passing each other. So I envision that. Uh, the Egyptians are saying they're going to clear this backlog in four days. There's about 400 ships there. That's 100 ships a day. And I think one of the things we should worry about, I think the Egyptians would be worried about this, is going too fast through the canal, uh, which is uh, probably a big cause for what happened here. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to be able to clear the canal in, in four days, because the other problem is in four days, another 200 ships show up in that process time. And so you, you've got to be able to get these vessels going. I, th I think about 75 vessels a day, maybe they're max to do, but who knows, the Egyptians are pushing hard to get this backlog clear. Uh, I think, again, I think one of the things we're going to find out, and I'm going to get together with a couple of people and we want to do a kind of, you know, retrospect on, on this and uh, put it out there of uh, what do we think happened? Uh, what do we think we should learn from this? Uh, maritime law is written in blood. And you know you don't change the number of lifeboats on a vessel until the Titanic goes down and Jack drowns. Rose should have let him on the raft. Uh, we don't do that. In many ways, it'll be the same here. Uh, no telling if what changes here, but I mean we'll probably see some sort of change. I would imagine the Egyptians would want to make some changes, but we just don't know yet. So anyway, I appreciate everybody's following me. Everybody's looking for me for information, which is weird, uh, but I appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep following this for a little bit more because I think it's, it's still not resolved. Uh, we're going to be seeing some re uh, reverber uh, reverberations from this down the road. Sorry, I've been talking a lot. So thank you.